Hi, it's Carrie. In today's 5 Minute Friday, I'm going to show you how I set up my documentation for a literature review. This could be a systematic review, a scoping review, just a narrative literature review. I set them all up basically the same way. And I start with a blank Word document. Now, other librarians do different things, and there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's just what you come to prefer. So I start with a blank Word document, and I start by inserting a table. Two columns, multiple rows, and this is what I fill out when I'm meeting with the research team. I'll have the topic, make a note over on this side. I'll have key articles if they have any. I'll do the timeline. For them, it might be six months or a year. For me, it's usually, let's say, three weeks. Then I will make a note of databases searched. So this would be PubMed. And usually, these days, I started to put the platform as well. Embase, Elsevier, Cochrane Library, Wiley. Let's say um, CINAHL plus EBSCO. That way they have both the database and the platform. Then I might put trial registries. So it's a little bit separate from the other resources. I could say clinicaltrials.gov and the WHO ICTRP. Next I put my name and affiliation. So search created by Carrie Price. And that way they have it and they don't have to go looking for it. They can acknowledge me when they're ready. Then I would probably go about by starting to create the search. So I would create a place for each search in the document below. And uh, I'm very particular about headings and all of that. So I usually put these as headings. That way it's more accessible. And then I would start typing out my search or figuring out my search terms or just start collecting my uh, search documentation here, database by database, translating when I'm ready. Now I'm a text block searcher, which means that I like to collect all my terms in one big text block instead of on separate lines. Now, sometimes I'll do a hybrid. It really just depends on the topic, but that's why this works for me because I'm able to just plop my text into each database section here and then translate as needed. Then, before I give it over to the researcher, I'll do date run, let's say 4-11-2022. And then lately I've been putting each result, each database result. So PubMed results, Embase results, Cochrane Library, uh, CINAHL Plus, and any other resources or databases you search, clinical trials. That way they have everything they need for the Prisma flow diagram. WHO, ICTRP, and then we'll put total results. Duplicates removed. Now, I have typically removed duplicates with EndNote. Some people are turning to resources like Rayon, Covidence to remove duplicates automatically. So whatever number you end up with on duplicates removed, you'll put it here. And then I usually put unique results. Now that seems like a lot of content up here, but it helps me keep everything straight, helps the researchers understand what I did. And if six months or a year goes by and it's time for an update, well then I'll just make another whole set of rows. Update run, let's say uh, 12, 11, 2022, and the same thing, PubMed, update, and so on and so forth. And that way, all the documentation is there when they need to fill out the Prisma flow diagram. They've got everything they need. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. <laughs>